What are the differences between appearance and truth or knowledge? Today we're going to talk about how Nietzsche, particularly in the book The Gay Science, talks about appearance. My name is Rodrigo Guim, anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. Let's start with a citation from the book. To the realists, you sober people who feel well-armed against passion and fantasies and would like to turn your emptiness into a matter of pride and an ornament. You call yourselves realists and hint that the world is really the way it appears to you, as if reality stood unveiled before you only and you yourselves were perhaps the best part of it. So Nietzsche here is clearly talking to those that think that they can speak of reality as if reality is just one, one way of seeing. And of course, he's pointing to the arrogance of that as well, how they feel, these realists feel themselves to be sober people who go against passions, they have fought against their own passions, as if that, that were something to be applauded, something that would show how they touch upon reality, because reality for the realists would be reality without passion, without fantasies, without imagination, without feeling. So these people, for Nietzsche, they are already turned against life itself because somebody that has turned against his own passions, his own mind, his fantasies, is somebody turned against himself, is somebody turned against life itself. So this person cannot be a realist. That's why he says that these people would like to turn their emptiness into a matter of pride and an ornament they, they, they need that. They need to feel full and superior because in reality, they are empty. Re let's talk about some reality. There is the, re the reality, the concomitant reality that they feel themselves to be empty. They feel empty. They have this will to truth, but this will to truth does not this bucket of the will to truth never gets full enough. So here Nietzsche is, of course, uh, pointing to the arrogance of those who call themselves realists, because for these, there is only one way of looking at the world, of looking at things, and they also feel that because they can see this, this only way, they would be the best part of reality. They also give um, this will to truth that they have such a high value that they posit themselves, they put themselves up there as superior to others. But, says Nietzsche, they are really empty. They are empty and their, they, their emptiness turns them into those that wish to occupy this uh, space of superiority. But this emptiness comes from them fighting with themselves, fighting their own passions, their own imagination. So these are people that will struggle with themselves in a way that annihilates their own reality and then calls this reality as if reality were made of veils that could be taken off and these people, the so-called realists, would be the ones that could see it. Only they could see it. Uh, so this is the arrogance of those metaphysicians, those thinkers that claim themselves 
to be superior to others because they see truth in the only way truth can appear and truth chose them to appear to them. Now let's go to a second aphorism on the book. No, this bad taste, this will to truth, to truth at any price, this youthful madness in the love of truth, have lost their charm for us. For that we are too experienced, too serious, too merry, too burned, too profound. We no longer believe that truth remains truth when the veils are withdrawn. We have lived too much to believe this. Today we consider it a matter of decency not to wish to see everything naked or to be present at everything or to understand and know everything. To give the same value to every knowledge, to wish to know everything and understand everything is a form of nihilism, is a form of giving wishing to give the same value to every knowledge. And that is a weak way of dealing with knowledge, of dealing with truth. Because there are truths and knowledges that might go against your way of being, might go against your life. And to wish to understand and know everything would be including to wish to know and understand ways to go against yourself, to go against life itself. So it's a will to nothingness. It's also a will against life in this sense. So a will to truth at any price comes even at the price of going against life. So truth in itself has no value. We must give it value depending on if it enhances life or if it goes against life. And that difference, that rigor is fundamental. Let's go to another aphorism. What is appearance to me now? Certainly not the opposite of some essence. What could I say about any essence except name the attributes of its appearance? End of citation. We don't know enough. We lack an organ for knowledge in order that we could distinguish things in themselves from appearances. Life did not equip us to knowledge in this mode of to total certainty and complete truth about anything. To crave for certainties can only come from a weak disposition to life, a will to truth that is linked to a will against life. A potent life resides with living as an artist, Nietzsche says, living with an inner craving for masks, for appearance, living with falseness that is inherent in life and doing that with a good conscience. The beauty of life is that it doesn't simply become an open book for us. It doesn't strip naked, or when it does, it's only to hide another part of itself, to keep us moving. But some people choose to slander, malign, calumniate life, instead of contemplating and celebrating its continuous play of appearances. So you see, Nietzsche is making it clear that behind appearances, you only find other appearances, Knowledge is of appearances as well. It's not behind appearances. There's nothing behind the appearances that we all are. We live within appearances. And we cannot look for knowledge for its own sake then, because knowledge is already enmeshed in these relations, in appearances, it's not beforehand. There's, there's no knowledge that is primary to action, to life. There's no knowledge primary to living. There's no knowledge that could give us the total certainty of anything. The, it's, knowledge is already an action. It's already part of appearances. Uh, there are knowledges, maybe, that we should speak of and not the truth uh, as a singular or knowledge as a singular. So, I hope you liked today's video. I wish to thank again my students, 
that are taking online courses with me now. I'm teaching now Michel Foucault's History of Sexuality. We're on volume two. And if you're interested, the link to more information is in the video description. Let me know what you think in the comments and see you next week.